Hey again, everybody. This is Salem Digest, and I am the bald one. I'll take off my hat just to show you if you're wondering why. And we are here again at Salem New Kitchen at 62 Pickering Wharf. Today, we're gonna do a short little feature on an ice cream cookie operation that calls itself Witch Witch. W-I-T-C-H, W-I-C-H. For some reason, every time I'm here at Salem New Kitchen, I'm spelling things for you. That's because they don't spell things typically here. And they also don't cook and prepare regular items here. We've got the crispy chicken cup, we've got Salem Spice, we've got El Maso World Kitchen, all kinds of people here. Today, we're gonna to take a look at which which and how it is that they make their excellent ice cream sandwiches. Come on in with me, guys. Let's see what there is to see. Hey guys, it's the bald one, and once again, I am here in the kitchen at New Kitchen, and today we're starting off our haunted happening season here in Salem and at Salem Access Television with the people, Jess and Brent, from Witch Witch. They make ice cream sandwiches. As you can see, they make them from scratch. There's probably a lot of work that goes in here. We're gonna try to make it look easy for you. So Jess, I see you're using two types of apples here. Can you tell us about them? Yes, we're using Macintosh and Granny Smith. So we have the sour and the sweet, and we're probably cutting about 10 to 15 apples right now. We're cutting 10 to 15 apples. You're cutting apples. Brent, what are you doing over there? Slicing and dicing. Are you qualified to handle a sharp knife like that? I don't know. I mean, I hope so, but I guess we'll see. I'm going to keep my distance. <laughs> All right, Jess, you've sliced up Granny Smith's. You've sliced up Max. Brent, I've never seen anybody pair an apple that well before. Uh, a, lot curls, a lot of curls and a lot of push-ups. Curls and push-ups to pair apples, guys. Jess, what are you doing now? So now I'm going to add in all the deliciousness to the apples to make it kind of its apple-y mixture. And then it's going to go on the stove. It's going to cook down. And that's kind of our secret to the ice cream. But right now I'm adding everything in. So I do follow a recipe. However, I kind of just feel it out. Whatever feels good to me. However much brown sugar, however much cinnamon, I'm loosely following the recipe. Things come out better when I just measure with the heart. <laughs> so we're just gonna start with a quarter cup. So I'm putting like three in for now. Again, once it cooks down, if I think it needs more, I'll add in more. And then cinnamon, we're just gonna kind of dump. I love cinnamon personally. I think it's a great fall flavor. So we're just gonna kind of go like that for now. And then that's it. You don't add any liquid to that? No, because when it cooks down, the liquid from the apples kind of come out and it gets all liquidy and delicious and gooey and bubbly. How'd you know that was the answer I was looking for? A second read your mind. <laughs> okay. Let's, we're gonna move it over to the stove now, right? Okay. All right, Jess, we got Brent on the flame over there cooking down the apple and the sugar and the cinnamon. What are you doing here? So I am starting um, to make the cookies. So we're making an oatmeal cookie um, to go with our apple pie ice cream. So I start with um, 10 sticks of butter. 10, 10, six. 10 sticks. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot, 10 sticks of butter. And something we do is, you know, typically with cookies, you have to have softened butter. And since we just got here, we didn't have time to leave it all out and get soft. So what we do is we put it all into the this big bowl here and then we put it over one of the flames and kind of let it soften up on its own. Not melt, but just get a little soft. Um, that's kind of our trick when, you know, you don't have all day to let the butter sit out and soften. But, yep, and just dumping it in. <laughs> the okay. apples are, once they're cooked down, that's gonna go into the fridge to cool, because that goes into the ice cream. Now, the cookies, we're moving on to the cookies. Kind of multitasking here. While Brent's doing that, I'm doing this. All right, so we got two big metal bowls here. We've got flour with cinnamon and salt over there. And we've got butter, softened, brown sugar, and white sugar. Why brown sugar and white sugar? So most cookie recipes call for both brown sugar and white sugar. And what's interesting is in our typical cookie recipe, it's equal parts brown sugar and white sugar. But in these oatmeal cookies, there's more brown sugar. Than, I actually see like double the amount of brown sugar than white sugar. And I think that definitely has to do with like oatmeal cookies being a, 
rich kind of like cozy flavor I guess um that's my theory you know baking's a science as my dad always told me so I guess that has something to do with it when I was in high school I baked all the cupcakes and desserts for my cousin's wedding which was really fun like I was like the only caterer I guess and I didn't have any experience I just baked which was fun so well that's very nice so what are we going to do with this stuff so Brent gets to have all the fun. We there's ten um, eggs in this recipe, and we ca crack them fresh every week. Um, definitely one of the more tedious tasks, I would say. Um, but yeah. There's the eggs. So next we're gonna put in the vanilla. And an interesting note about the vanilla is we use pure vanilla extract. If you probably noticed, they also sell imitation vanilla extract, which is also significantly cheaper than this stuff, but the taste is just like totally different. So something we always get is pure no matter how expensive it is. So I think that's really what makes our cookies part of the reason why they're good. The next thing that's going in is molasses into the oatmeal cookies. And another interesting thing about the molasses is we tested a bunch of cookies um, before picking the one we liked the best. And we did some without molasses and some with molasses. And I don't think molasses is a super common ingredient in oatmeal cookies, but it, when you compare them side to side, it makes a huge difference, especially freezing them. It makes it a lot chewier than non-molasses. So we're putting in five tablespoons into this. And now we're combining the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. Again, this is flour, baking soda, salt, and cinnamon. And finally, the last step is to add in our oats. We use old fashioned oats. And another interesting thing is we actually tested old fashioned versus quick oats because they are very different. And again, quick oats did not compare to old fashioned. So that's a tip when you're making your oatmeal cookies. I'm gonna add in 15 cups and that's it. And he's gonna mix it in. 15 cups of the old fashioned. So does it take longer obviously to if you use these as opposed to the quick ones, it takes longer to get them ready? I wouldn't say like the timing is different, it's just how they baked. Like the ones with the quick oats was very like, they didn't spread, they were just like very dense and not good. At, how would you describe them? I think uh, texture wise, when you're really looking for that original oatmeal cookie, the old fashioned definitely does it. I would say the quick oats definitely gets the job done, but That's when you you're have, trying to yeah. serve top tier stuff, you got to use old fashioned. No shortcuts. Nice. I just feel like it holds moisture a lot better. So when we're freezing our cookies, they actually can stay a little bit chewy once you take them out. Instead of quick oats, when we had, when we made them, they're hard as a brick. So I just feel like when it comes to old fashioned, it just holds moisture better which is really important when it comes to the softness of the cookie. So another, another added tip there. We're gonna chill this in the freezer for like 10 minutes just to get a little bit um, structure because if you just bake them like this, they'll just go flat. So you want them to have at least a little bit of structure, so. And you put the apples in there also? Yes, in the, fridge. the in apples the fr went to the fridge to cool because when that goes in the ice cream, we don't want them warm. I have a question for you guys. Do you like oatmeal cookies with raisins or no raisins? Let me know. I, I have no preference. 
I like oatmeal cookies. I don't have a sweet tooth, but I do like oatmeal cookies. Okay. All right, so we've taken the, the, the cookie mix out of the refrigerator. The butter, I mean, the apples are still in the fridge. You're forming your cookies. Talk us through it. So it's pretty simple. We just use a scoop. This is just a normal ice cream scoop. And that's what we do to kind of keep an even size. So we do um, three by four. We space them out enough so they don't go into each other. Pretty straightforward. So you dip it in the water so it doesn't stick so much? Yes, correct. Yeah, we just do that every, you know, once it starts to feel sticky. So that it's a nice, smooth, clean scoop. Do you trust Brent with the cookie forming at all, or is he just not, not included <laughs> in this process? No, I, I do, I do. We usually both do this, like we'll be multitasking, like once they go in the oven, one person will be taking them out and putting them on the cooling tray, one person will be scooping, we kind of just do whatever task is needed. Of course I trust him. Uh, how big are each of these? I mean, how many ounces? Of the, the cookies? You don't know. I do not know. I to know. be honest, I've never <laughs> weighed them. The proper answer in the military is, I don't know, sir, but I know where to find the answer, and I'll get back with you. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Brent estimates an ounce and a half. One cookie scoop worth. So you usually do four trays at a time. Are we doing four trays today or just two trays? Whatever would work for you guys. Um, we usually do four. Okay, just so we keep our rotation. We'll do four. You might as well. We're fine with that. And you've already got the oven turned up, I guess. And yeah. how hot do you, how, what do you cook these at? What temperature? So the recipe, so the interesting thing is the recipe calls for anywhere between 325 and 350. But we, this oven is a convection oven. And we've had to kind of play around with the temp a lot. So we have it on the lower side, like 275. And we found that that cooks them the best. And if it's too hot, then they like spread too quick. And then it's just, it's taken a bit of trial and error to figure out the best temp. Tell us about this convection oven stuff for those of us that aren't up to date on the different types of ovens. Would you like to explain? Sure. Do you feel I mean, a convection oven is an essentially an oven that has air swirling around in it. So everything cooks a lot more evenly and faster. Mm -hmm. So it basically, it has fans in there to move the air around. Oh, well, very nice. Okay. Would you prefer a convection oven or not a convection oven? Convection oven. Yes. Right. It makes this process a lot faster. And it just cooks a lot more even than a normal oven, I would say. Very nice. Now I know what a convection oven is. Will there be a quiz later? <laughs> yes, of course. I'll be ready. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and have a taste of the apples, the cinnamon, the brown sugar, the white sugar, butter, vanilla extract. No, a little, little off. Apples, brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter. What do you think? Am I gonna like this? I think so, I hope so. If you like apple pie. Oh yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah, that, that's good stuff. And that will go in the ice cream, so. Bald one approved. Which, which, accept no imitations.